guess we'll do some more of this nonsense. Um, <laughs> it is just that. Um, there's no argument here, you know, a counter-argument of any kind. Um, some explanation of how I'm supposed to understand how nothing has any real value. It doesn't matter whether I have a, a you know, a blood vessel explodes in my brain and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter what happens to me. It doesn't matter whether I, it takes 10 years to die or it takes 10 minutes to die. Nothing matters. Everything's nothing. We just make up stuff based on what we feel. We're not thinking organisms. We can only feel about things. We can't understand something and then modify our behavior based on our understanding. Um, our devotion can't be the truth. We can't love the truth. We have to love some idiotic idea, some notion in the head. Um, just rubbish all the way through. So let's continue here at 10.08. I'll just play his bits and try to speed this up. Really I like that word for it. Whatever. It just ran with it for the time being. Um, All right, since we're talking about altruism, which who cares is not the subject. Um, I mean, it's a complex idea. Right? Altruism comes down to doing something you know is correct, and you're doing it because you're humiliated if you don't. You're can't live with yourself. You're not really being altruistic. Heroes aren't really being altruistic in a sense because they know a truth. They're conceding to it. They're behaving according to it because it's honorable to respect the truth. It's an honor code. There's no real altruism. There's just honor codes. Yeah, it's not logical. It's not illogical. Again, so he's just saying there's no logic to be done here. There's no facts regarding value. That's his, his, his contention. That we just make up fantasies based on silly emotional feelings. And there's no such thing as anything truly consequential in any qualitative way. There's no qualitative element to anything's existence in the universe. There's no such thing as a real qualitative element. I say it's obviously, <laughs> sentience is an obvious qualitative element. The only real qualitative element. Sensual experience. Okay. Why, what, why is it illogical to treat other people like me differently? Because we've already established that they were the same fundamentally essentially for the purpose of the conversation we've declared them essentially the same in their functionality they torture here torture there same thing no need to play games about who why consequences any of that shit it's just torture or torture and it's understood that bad is bad is bad is bad I'm not saying they are different. I'm talking about how you should treat them. Because in my philosophy, there is no should or shouldn't with respect to how we treat them in any kind of real objective sense. Right, so there's no should in any kind of rational, real sense. There's just made-up fables and fantasies we tell each other. We just lie, essentially. People lie about something having value when it doesn't really have value. And that's supposed to make sense. There's no truth. There's no real value. It doesn't matter whether I just walked up to him and stuck a fucking pin in his eye or hammered a nail into his eye for no good reason whatsoever. No consequence. Nothing wrong happened. He would have no logical reason to prosecute me or to swear at me or do a damn thing about it because he would just concede, ah, yeah, that's just as good as a cupcake. Thank you. We either treat them fairly... Okay. Um, fairly, again, isn't part of the conversation. The conversation's about what do you have in the end. Um, fairness would say Adolf Hitler should get kicked in the nuts. But fairness is irrelevant once the war is over and deterrence isn't an issue. Then all you have is more nuts broken. Uh, an eye for an eye doesn't make any sense if there's no deterrent value. There's just more people blind. What are you doing? 
That's logic. That's excluded middle. When you say that you should is consistent, logically consistent, you have this logical obligation to treat them the same. No, no, no. They are the same or they're not the same. And yeah, yeah, asshole, exactly. And if they're the same, they can't be treated differently because then they're not the same anymore because now their properties are different. Being tr how you are treated is some of your property. What you, their general, this is the general style of treatment. The difference between a slave and the master was how they were treated. Okay? It's a big difference. It annihilates the sameness, is the treatment. Treatment was the biggest difference between them. In this case, they're not really the same, but in essence... Well, again, in this case, they are the same, and, and, and for the sake of the argument, they are the same. The, the feelings of torture are the same. If you think you're having special feelings, then demonstrate them. The fundamental argument is, is that the basic sensations of a nail in the eye are common to all human beings. There are exceptional people who are completely insensitive to pain, and there's other people that are more sensitive to pain. No one's discounting that, but we're just saying, generally speaking, it's going to be in this category, and the category is going to be loudly unpleasant. They're the same in the sense that you possess similar properties, characteristics, blah, blah, blah. It's more than similar, okay? So you can keep playing these games like there's some obvious or... or our glaring, our fundamental problem in establishing that we have a common functionality, which is you have good sensations and bad sensations. Maybe different things will irritate us. Maybe your ears are more sensitive than your nose. Maybe this, this, and this. That's not the issue. The issue is, is that your basic functionality is, is that you're going to have sensations that are clearly unpleasant, and you're going to have sensations that are clearly pleasant, and that basic essential functionality is the same. But that, the feeling of badness in suffering, by the way, I think suffering is bad, is part of what suffering is. It's not merely that... Well, there's no point in you saying it's what suffering is, because you're saying it's not essential to it, it's not a real thing. There's no real bad, there's no real qualitative meaning. So again, you can't talk out of both sides of your fucking face Okay, with this fork tongue nonsense. I believe it has value, but I believe all value is subjective and, and has no correlation to anything real. You can't make both arguments, shithead. Well, you can. Quite obviously, you're doing it. But you're doing it in violation of the fundamental premises of logic, which is you can't change the definition of fucking words. We have this attitude, like... Oh, here's suffering. No, I think it's bad. No, I think bad. Like you, I'm not different in this regard. Okay, we can call it intrinsically negative. Well, I there's no point. You just said there's nothing that's intrinsically anything. You, you, you're, just, you're such a fucking hypocrite. How can you fucking one minute say one thing and the next minute you say something else? If you're conceding the existence of a real bad, an essential, true, existing in the universe bad then you're not a nihilist, asshole. And then you've basically conceded the fundament of my argument, which is that's the fucking value, shithead. And that's what needs to be reduced. It's an experience, but it doesn't demand any sort of... You, you should lo be logically consistent in how you treat other people. No, that's different, okay? That's... No, no, there's no difference. The argument is if you treat bad just like nothing... Okay, then it can't be by definition bad. One of the properties of bad is that it's not nothing. One of the properties of bad is you don't treat it just like something good. That's one of its properties. You treat it exactly the opposite of how you treat something good. That's one of its, that's a definition of the fucking word, shithead. The word has no meaning if you don't include that as part of the definition. If bad isn't the opposite of good, then you have misdefined bad. Completely fucking different. That is not, that, that's just totally bizarre, right? It says him again. <laughs> like he knows what bizarre is. Bizarre relative to what? Your bizarre position, right? You've already conceded you're a rather bizarre individual, and then you're going to call things bizarre. That's a little bit dangerous, Mr. Bizarro. All right, I'll be back. 
All right, so I just did the part about the dentist, you know, and why don't you go to the dentist and just say, no, no Novocaine, please. I'm smart enough to know that the pain doesn't matter. It's not significant. It's not a bad thing. So go ahead, let it rip, because I'm smart enough to know that. Um, and, you know, and again, still making the same argument. I was actually arguing again where he keeps using the word value, and his definition of value is, is some subjective opinion based on no reasoning. So we value something because we get a hard dick or we get some sort of incentive, some sort of prize or present from our emotional character for doing it. And he thinks those values are the same as some conversation about some kind of real value. So again, when he says, I think it has value, he isn't saying he means intrinsic or fundamental or real value. He just means some sort of subjective, it makes you happy thing. You have a feeling. So again, it's not about thinking, it's about feeling. That's what he learned from reading all of these asshole books, is that somehow we can only feel. We can't really do any thinking. It's a pile of shit. He just made that up. Right. So a whole long clip. I mean, he just, he just played my video for a minute and a half. I made three different points in the clip. And he just says, you made it up. What, what part did I make up, asshole? When you no, yeah, just, ign thing, just ignored it. Just ignored it. Three, as if it's a zero, when you do the math, it's not a positive three. If you do a negative three, I got a zero, then it's not a negative three. I mean, this is, it doesn't make any sense. You're saying, yes, it has value, but I don't mean value in any kind of real way. I just mean some kind of silly word we use to describe nothing. Now, why isn't he cut in right there and explain? Explain how I have misinterpreted something. You're claiming that, yes, there is no real negative. You're claiming there's no real positive. There's all, there's just nothing and nothing and nothing and nothing. There's no qualitative meaning in the universe. There is no, nothing of substance qualitatively. Nothing to see here, essentially. There are two bad feelings. So far, I don't have any objections. Good and bad feelings, so far I have no objection. But again, they're not good and bad. You're, I, I just made the point, right? If, if you're treating it as if it's nothing, you're treating it exactly like nothing, it can obviously cannot be bad then. Something bad can't be treated like a neutral. But when I object is when Bentham says that reason and logic can just recognize that Everyone else out there is part of the... You... Well, yeah. I mean, why doesn't he jump in here, right? He's playing this. Why doesn't he jump in here? Part of the universe, right? And then he does the game metaphor. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, he's playing the whole clip, and he's not responding to anything in here. This is where you interject. This is where you're supposed to explain how I made a mistake, and he doesn't do it. I don't know. I'll, I'll come back. I mean, there's no point in playing my own clips. I mean, fuck. All right, so I just did the point where I was just pointing out for the purpose of the argument, essentially, these are all the pieces are the same, right? They're all just game pieces, like in Sari or something. They're just different colors. They're whatever they are, but they're basically the pieces all do the same thing. We all wash dishes. We all have positive and negative sensations. We're all capable of being tortured. Being that our piece is more important. Well, it is, obviously, because you never fail to ought in your own personal benefit. You always find the ought. I ought to have the Novocaine. I ought to wear the condom. I ought to... You're always able to find it when it's you. When you're protecting yourself from disease and suffering and harm, you're always able to see the ought. And the question is, this other thing is going to have the same harm, the same experience, the same suffering, the same torture. It deserves the same prophylactic protections. And if, we, and if anyone is saying that, it's only to us. It's not any kind of main... Well, again, this to us stuff, again, well, again, how, how, I mean, I, I've, I've argued it and argued it. You're just going to keep using it as if it's supposed to mean something. I'm saying the to us thing means nothing because as soon as I concede the existence of to us, I, ex I concede the existence to them and I recognize that now I am a them. And by them standards, now all of a sudden, my suffering doesn't matter. 
And I'm saying, yes, it does. No one's allowed to think my suffering doesn't matter. That's bullshit. Fuck you in the ass. You're not allowed to think my suffering doesn't matter. I'm not a them, fucker. I will not be themed by you. Again, so there's no such thing as suffering in an objective sense, yet these assholes, every single time they're put to the test, they will protect themselves from the experience. Why is that? Oh, that's right, because it's damn obvious when it's happening to you. To me, this isn't even a question of more or less important. Right? Things, things are what they are. Th so this is, that's a great line, right? Things are what they are. That's like saying it's God's will. What the fuck does that mean? Things are the way they are. Yeah, we're sentient and we have good and bad feelings. Apparently that part of reality isn't the way they are. You're saying things are the way they are. Well, they're the way you say they are, but they're not the way they are, in my opinion. Your description of reality, that it's just as good to have a nail in my eye as it is to have a cupcake, in my opinion, is absolute fucktarded nonsense. Things matter to you or they don't. You can find uh, it matters to you or they don't. Again, so it matters to you or it doesn't. So if it matters to me to put the kid in the child safety seat, then I put the kid in the safety seat. But there's no real ought or logic or rationale or reason to be at all careful. If I feel like cooking the food, I'll cook it. If I don't feel like cooking it, then I'll give everybody food poisoning. Who cares? It's all the same difference, right? There's no reason or logic to be applied. Fuck you. Value things, you can value different things. Right, and there's values that have some sort of rational uh, a co co connection to what we know is real. And everybody knows, everybody personally when they're ussing is certainly quite aware of the realness of bad sensations and the oughtness of avoiding them. And yes, it's essentially reduces to, you know, I felt good about this, or I didn't feel good about this. And well, again, so all this feely crap, right? So uh, th these are supposed to be intellectuals, and they have, they, they're, um, they think thinking is obnoxious. They think thinking is daydreaming. Thinking is fantasy. If you really want to know the truth, you have to feel it. Fuck you. Uh, you can use metaphors like positive and negative numbers, or explicitly. Well, you can't in your book. So again, just why are you saying you can when you won't allow me to? You won't allow them to be really negative. You won't allow them to be really positive. You'll just say they're to them. They're not in the universe. It doesn't count as a reality. It's not a truth. It's not a statement of truth. So what's the point? non-metaphorically, you know, literally take that, um, to be true, but, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Torture. Whatever. Torture. Whatever. Fuck, you just belong in a concentration camp, you little fucking weasel. You do. <laughs> yeah, it's what you deserve. So, just as a starting point, like I said, anyway, I'm not going to play my own video. I'll be back. All right, so I'm saying all the little pieces have a value engine. So, by having experience, we generate something valuable. Experiences are valuable. It's a truth, a fact. Here we go. Does it matter if they all get burned to death in a fire? It only matters to them. Oh, there we go. So if it's an imbecile, a retard, and it can't know, then it, it doesn't matter. We could, we could literally use them as slaves and then eat them, and that is okay because whatever bad feelings they have, it doesn't matter because they didn't have the competence to be able to say, hey, this isn't fair, or this isn't right, or this is wrong. So if it, the person doesn't speak English and I can't understand their complaint, I can do whatever the fuck I want because I don't understand their complaint. <laughs> this is just... Fuck you. Glib bastard.
And I'll keep saying that until it goes through your fucking... Yeah, I don't know. It's never going to go through my head because I'm conscious, jackass. And I realize that I don't glib take my consciousness glibly. I don't take it not seriously. I don't play with matches. I don't stick them in my eye. I don't shove them up my nose. I don't stick them in my ass. And I do it for a reason, because it would be bad. I would experience bad experiences if I did. Thick ass fucking head. You dumb fucking cunt. Yeah, whatever. Just live with that for the rest of your life. You just basically said the Holocaust doesn't matter. Yes. You can go ahead and exploit and harm and cause extra suffering to other sentient beings and it's okay. Go ahead, torture animals for entertainment, for fun. It's okay, no problem there whatsoever. Fuck you, get what you deserve, you lousy piece of shit. Again, the hypocrisy. If he wasn't a glaring hypocrisy person, again, if he didn't demonstrate wherever he, he will take comfort wherever he can get it. He has a nice comfy bed, a nice soft mattress. He has a little TV at his, the foot of his bed. He has every little luxury, little air conditioning, hot tubs, all of these conveniences. All right. He lives on this high, nice, soft, little fucking cushy life of comfort. And why does he do that? Because yes, he understands that it would be bad not to have those things. And um, how you dispose of them is important. That's right. To them. To them. Again, to them. So uh, this, this to them shit. So just call everything a them. That's the biggest N-word ever. Right? Fuck using nigger. Just call it a them. You want to fucking abuse something? Call it a them. Man, you people suck. Hey, I... Me and Heimfordy are just going to... You can call us two themists, right? Because we are two themists. Yeah, exactly. That's what you are. And that's why you deserve to fucking goddamn... Yes, you couldn't get it bad enough, okay? You have no respect for torture, suffering, misery, pain. You have no respect for the sentient organism in distress except for your fucking self. When it happens to you, it's obvious the art exists, okay? But when it happens to somebody else, all of a sudden you lose the capacity to recognize the bad. And why is that? Only one goddamn reason. Because you're too fucking stupid to realize that selfish is idiotic. It's Dumb, asshole. You're a dumb, little, weaselly, privileged cunt. We really fucking mean it. Yeah, and I mean it. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could... Well, there's no point. But you can imagine. Um, however, I object to that in the experience is subjective. So what? Again, what do you mean, so what? Yeah, what I, what I mean is, is it, yes, uh, uh, it's always going to happen to individuals because brains are individual. Yeah, so the experience is always going to be in a subject who's capable. It's like, it's like saying dishwashing is always by dishwashers. Yeah, that's right. Yes, dishwashers wash dishes. That's right. Steel mills don't wash dishes. Fucking iPods don't wash dishes. Lots of things don't wash dishes. Dishwashers wash dishes. Yeah. So what? It's important that qualification, right? That it is so. Why? Why? Why is it important? I mean, really, if a, if if a computer program uh, uh, is deciphering pi. Why, why is it important that it's just doing it as a subjective computer program? It's happening in one computer in one location. How does that change the math? Oh, that's right. It doesn't change it at all. It's completely irrelevant. Objective. The fact that, you know, um, whatever, someone sticking a nail in your eye, there's no little oughts flying through the air of logical consistency saying, you ought to reduce uh, uh, his suffering. Yeah, it is when it's coming towards my eye. You don't see the ought. Okay, just prove it then, asshole. Go ahead and prove it. Take a, take a nail and a hammer and drive it into your fucking eye. So prove your philosophy. Prove that there's no ought. 
that you shouldn't do that. Prove it. But you won't do that because you're a pussy. Where's this ether, you fucking idiot? <clears throat> well, again, so he's saying, where's the logical connection between having a negative sensation and preventing a negative sensation? There's no logical connection between that. Negative is not negative. It's neutral or better. <laughs> right? Maybe negative is super positive. But it's not negative. It's not bad. That's the point, right? Yeah, this really, this is, you know, in a way, you're just saying that right there. Okay, this, and this is the point where I think Vic said the, it, this gets good. So it took 17 minutes into this video before there was a part that Vic thought was good. So here's his favorite moment, 1709. Okay, so there it is. So we're right there. That's it, right there. So that's Vic's philosophy. All right, let's just play that again. So there I am, right? Okay, I, me and Hind Buddy are just gonna, you can call us two demists, right? Because oh, we are two demists. Went back further than I wanted. We, it is subjective. It is subjective. It, the fact that, you know, um, whatever. The fact that. So he's using the word the fact that and then talking about subjective. So there's no such thing as a fact, out a fact regarding the sentient experience that isn't tainted somehow by a subjective prejudice. Not subjective rationality, not subjective thinking, not subjective logic. No, subjective irrationality. You're saying it's a, a kind of dementia. You're, you're saying it's a kind of delusion. The suffering delusion. Okay, that's what I'll title the video. The suffering delusion. You think suffering is a delusion. You don't think a brain accurately understands it if it thinks it's a real event. You're an idiot. <laughs> a really big idiot. So is Vic. Someone sticking a nail in your eye. There's no little oughts flying through the air of logical consistency saying... Well, again, I mean, I'm just saying seriously. Now, honestly, asshole listening. Is it really true? So, so when you have a raw tooth nerve and the dentist is ready to poke at it, there's no ought, there's no automatic, undeniable sense that, yes, the Novocaine would be appropriate. The Novocaine ought to be used. That isn't just obvious to the circumstance for you. It's not obvious that you should cook your food so you don't get poisoned. It's not obvious to avoid sickness, which is unpleasant. Oh, please. You ought to reduce uh, his suffering. Right, so the vagina has obvious, uh, like, herpes and syphilis on it, and you ought not to wear the condom? Where's this ether, you fucking idiot? <clears throat> Well, again, I didn't say there was an ether literally. I've just implied to you, stating as a metaphorical thing, that as I have the negative experience, I can only understand it one way. Don't do that again. I don't, no way, go anywhere near doing that again. Don't step anywhere near a bridge that takes you there again. Don't go in, don't open the door, right, in the horror movie. Yeah, don't open the fucking door. Uh, again, so, 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 every so that was it. You know? So Vic thought that was a great argument. The argument from our brains are individual, therefore they can't do logic, they can't think, they can't understand a set of facts, they can't put the facts together and see where they point. They can't do any of that stuff in any kind of consistent way. So 2 plus 2 does not equal 4. It just doesn't. No matter how many people think it equals 4, it doesn't because they're subjective opinions. It's just a subjective opinion that 2 plus 2 equals 4. No truth value. Bullshit. Ah! Uh, so anyway, so he did the sweater stupid thing, and he, he, he took a rag on the, sh the shirt. Um, actually, the history of this shirt is kind of funny. 
This is actually like a hundred dollar shirt. It's a, some kind of designer shirt. Um, you know, I bought a, a, a used hard drive on, uh, you know, an external hard drive on eBay. And the guy put in his posting, yeah, I'm going to wrap it in this ugly fuck, you know, boogan snoggin shirt that uh, I look like hell in. And yeah, it was a free shirt. So yeah, pretty cool. So yeah, I used it to pack the hard drive. But I mean, it's got like real bone buttons on it and shit. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it is a pretty nice shirt. And it actually uh, works for me, you know, it it's actually looks good on me, you know, but a lot of things look good on me. Just the way it works out. As I should treat same, same. Yeah, but there's a blunt fucking assertion from me. Just like... Yeah, okay, so, so same isn't same, okay. Uh, hypocrisy's okay, so essentially logic's fucked because hypocrisy is contradiction. Yeah. Where do you... Okay. Okay, here's one person, right? Here's another person. They're the same. They can both suffer. Why I ought... Why ought I treat them the same? You can't say because they are the same, because that... That implicitly presupposes that it's... logically consistent to be fair. Well, that, that's fucking idiotic for one. Well, that's not the argument I'm making. I'm just saying that, just to, you know, obviously if you're just doing a coin toss kind of scenario, then yeah, it just doesn't matter. More A happens to A, it happens to B. But all I have to do is increment the amount of pain by just 10% and just make the argument that, well, if the pain goes to person A, it'll be 10% worse than if you give it to person B. Now we understand the meaning of the sameness in their basic function, and that all we have to do is make a tiny difference to that sameness, and it's going to require action. So that's the argument, is and and it goes the same for us as individuals. Like I said, it's if I think it's necessary to prevent me from having syphilis, it's necessary to prevent anyone from having syphilis. If I think it's necessary to prevent me from dying of a brain tumor or having the pain of a brain tumor or having the pain of a truth extraction without Novocaine. If I think that would be bad, a waste of suffering, I would think it's a waste of suffering when it's happening to something that's the same as me. So I'm just saying that essentially I could just view the rest of the world as clones of myself. And if they were actually clones of myself, I mean, I could probably have a better conversation with myself than you. I probably should just do that. You know, pretend to be a nihilist and just make the arguments and just point out how stupid this whole argument is. Because there's absolutely no reason for me to see it any other way. The brains don't, aren't, don't have skin color. They aren't all this bullshit, okay? The brains just function and feel. And there's no difference. So that's the distinction, is that I can understand, okay, that it happening to me or it happening to it. They're both bad, and if I'm going to act to prevent it from happening to this brain, logically, action's required to prevent it from happening to that brain, because it's exactly the same problem. If I can save both of people, like if I, if I can jump out of traffic, or I can push the other guy and jump out of traffic, it's quite obvious I push the other guy and I jump. I mean, I push the guy out of getting hit. I do him the same favor I did me. But even if it was true, why ought we value, why, why does logical consistency have value, right? Well, again, logical consistency is, again, it, all I have to do is just say, okay, what if they were identical copies of you, with all your, exactly you? You'd certainly understand why they ought exist now. You'd certainly understand the sameness argument. So all you're really just saying is, is that I can understand same through my bigoted senses, but I can't understand it as soon as you make somebody's nose bigger or you change the color of their eyes. All of a sudden, I can't see it anymore. That's silly. No answer. This isn't even a matter of true and falsehood, right? Truth and falsehood have nothing to do with how we treat people. Truth and falsehood have nothing to do with how we treat people. Again, is there any reason to this? 
There's no logic to not casually causing people unnecessary harm. Truth has nothing to do with that. I mean, you, well, yeah, I mean, no, 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 they do it. They, no, they do it. Truth and falsehood have nothing to do with how you treat people. They have to do with statements, propositions, and... Consider- right, and all, we already made all of those statements and propositions. I've identified feelings as coming as good and bad qualitative experiences, and I've identified the other feeling things as essentially the same as me. Those propositions have already been made. You haven't counter-argued them with any kind of reason. You haven't given me any reason to doubt either one of those theories. First, that sensations are qualitatively different, and then second, uh, I'm essentially the same, doing the same function as the other humans in the terms of sensate experience, and just like most of the mammals. That's a fact. You are not. You haven't countered those facts. Consistency applies to logical arguments and so on. But right, and this is a logical argument, just like my veganism is a logical argument. I became a vegan because I logically understood a circumstance. This is coming from a fucking moron, idiotic fuck who thinks that premises have to be factual and, and, and an argument for it to be valid. Yeah. I, I'm just sorry. I mean, obviously, if the premises are incorrect, they have, would have to be, to, to be incorrect, they would have to be superfluous. So they would have to be meaningless. So yes, you could still do two plus apple pie plus four equals six and say, oh yeah, well, we know apple pie is irrelevant. So, I mean, you could have a false premise that's erroneous and irrelevant and meaningless and insignificant in terms of its impact, but that's the only way you could have a falsehood is if it wasn't saying anything. You're a fucking idiot, mate. Well, again, I'm just going to mock you through eternity now, right? I mean, for the rest of eternity, theoretically. (laughs) <laughs> this video will play on and on and on, and you'll have to be buried under your um, profound stupidity. I treat myself, so if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do it for yourself, then clearly you have some obligation built out of that itself. No, no, you don't. Yeah, you do. I'm just saying for consistency, the some obligation would come out of there's some connection between you and the other thing, so any connection at all would create some reason. You just can't escape it. You can say you can, but I'm just saying you violated the rules of contradiction then. You're just basically, yes, you're being hypocritical. You're changing the standard in the middle of the logical stream. You can't do that. No, you don't. Right? If, if fairness... If fairness is... Good. Fairness... I, like I said, I haven't used the word fairness in any of these videos for the last five weeks. The subject isn't fairness. Fairness is a concept when you're talking about social contracts, um, all kinds of shit like that. Okay? That's contextual, um, and that has to do with not ethics that have anything to do with reality. It just has to do with what creates social cohesion or creates social function. So that's a completely different subject. Fairness is irrelevant to this conversation. But again, like morality, you just keep using words and putting them in my mouth as if I've said them and I haven't said them. If if fairness has value, if fairness is good, then yeah, you ought... Well, again, I didn't say that. It's not part of my argument. This is just a straw man that you're using for your own purposes. You haven't responded to what I have said. You just keep responding to what I haven't said. Treat the same the same. That's what fairness is, you fucktard. No, it doesn't really have anything to do with that. It doesn't have anything to do with being fair. It has to do with being accurate to the words and what they mean. If something is the same and you treat them differently, they're not the same. And the obligation is to explain why the difference. So if you make a difference, you have to explain why the difference. You've now made same things different. You have to explain why you did that. Why did you make same things different? You really are fucking stupid, you know that? 
and just logically looking at yourself, you'd say, yes, it makes sense. No, it doesn't. Why? Well, again, so it doesn't make sense to him. It makes sense to me, quite obviously. Bad is bad. I know my brain isn't special brain. I know other people's torture is real. It's a real event. And it's just as bad as the bad I avoid. So everything I avoid is not not bad when it's happening to somebody else. It's just as bad. Just as bad. Be in a state that is less than neutral or nothing. If you don't have to be. Well, the motivation to get out the, the motivation to get out the negative is built into the negative. Oh, yeah, okay, so there you go. The motivation to get out of the negative is built out of the negative. Exactly. The motivation is reasonable. The motivation is intrinsically reasonable. Well, there's no logical imperative demanding that, you know, you ought to get out of the negative. It is necessary that you get out of the negative. Right. So, again, that's your personal experience, that you don't sense that. You don't have an, a profound realization of ought. So Dr. Mengele is coming at you with the little spinning tool, and you don't have any profound sense of ought, that this ought not to happen. I am the platonic ether of goodness demanding that... You know, we should fucking treat the same the same. Coming uh, Another different argument. So see how he just keeps switching the argument? The argument is about whether or not when we personally are experiencing it, the odd is obvious, and now he's back on the same same argument. No, you can't treat the same same if you don't acknowledge that the same thing is happening. Right? So again, you're not acknowledging sameness because you're saying when they're having a bad experience there somehow isn't an ought. No, there is an ought. They're sensing the ought. The, under, the point is, is can you understand that that's what's really happening? That it really is bad. It has all of the constituent elements. I mean, I've made the analogy between the child thing, right? The child has the valuable properties. The possessor is irrelevant. The possessor does not make children valuable. Children are valuable intrinsically. Um, some dumb fucking heck who lives in the woods. Oh, that was brilliant. So I'll just add that you're some weasley little pussy who needs his mummy to wipe his ass. I bet you literally do. She has to scrub your little undies for you, doesn't she? You can't even do laundry, right? I mean, you can't cook, you can't do a damn thing for yourself, can you, asshole? I mean, and I've lived 55 years on like a dollar a day. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm a little more competent than you, jackass. Yeah, just a little bit. For myself, it's just that even myself. Okay, so here we'll get to this. It ought to be hilarious, correct? I can't help myself. I have to take care of myself because I can't. It's a compulsion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not something you, you do ahead of time. You don't go to the dentist with some compulsion and say, I'm compelled to ask you to give me Novocaine. You do it because you know it's going to alleviate your pain. You understand it as a truth, and that's why you do it. You, you understand it's going to cause pain, right? And you're trying to avoid that, okay? But it's the pain that generates the value, not... Well, I, I don't know. It's the pain that generates the value. So again, he's just saying that the pain itself has no negative value, that somehow the pain is just telling you. It's not giving you a negative experience, and then you're saying, fuck negative experiences. He's again arguing as if... It's not really a bad event. You're just being educated by the pain. The pain's just saying, yes, you should have Novocaine for no good reason because that would stop the sensation. Yes, this sensation isn't bad, but I'm just letting you know, take the Novocaine. 
No, and we know that's not what's happening, right? You're actually having a bad sensation, and you're choosing the Novocaine because you know it'll prevent the bad sensation. So let's not pretend. But again, that's all they have. Fuck these people. I mean, it's so bad. I mean, this is really... Like I said, I've, I've made the analogies before. I can't imagine a type of human. I mean, barbarians. I mean, you go out through all of human history. I mean, even... even you know, Japanese people eating Chinese people. I might be able to get more along with some Japanese guy who's chowing down on some Chinese liver. I might be able to find more humanity in that individual than these pieces of shit. I mean, there's nothing on this earth as bad as this crap. You understand it, you fucktard. It's not some sort of, oh, excuse my erection. No, sorry, no sale. You're this, you no, I'm not sidetracking it. I'm saying it's not some sort of irresistible impulse to choose Novocaine, okay? It's a rational thing you do because you know consequentially you'll have a bad experience as you don't. And it'll be a bad experience. It won't be it won't be some experience that says you should have had Novocaine. No, it's going to be a bad experience. A regrettable experience. It's not like spontaneous diarrhea or something. You have plenty of time to contemplate exactly what's going to take place and you understand perfectly well. Novocaine means no negative. No Novocaine means lots of negative going to happen. Yeah, right. So what? Oh, there we go. Okay, so what? I mean, that's his response. So again, it's so torture. So what? So what? That's his response, okay? That's his counter-argument to me. He's telling me, so I should say, so what to pain and suffering. It's a so what thing. Quite obviously, it's not a so what thing. That's why millions of people spend billions of dollars trying to find cures for their suffering. Because it's not a so what event. It's a fucking goddamn so fucking important event. I mean, this is such a lie. It's such a lie to the basic function of the human organism. All right, anyway. I think I'm about out of time on this camera, so I think we'll just hold here because it's just gotten too stupid again. So what, he says. So what? Morphine. So what? Who cares? Anesthesia for surgery. So what? <sighs> I just, you know, there's just nothing more contemptuous than these monsters. Nothing.